And here is what we are going to do. We are going to save all of creation by engaging in massive job creation of renewables and electric vehicles and energy conservation and energy efficiency. And we are going to have the single greatest blue collar job creation revolution in two generations. And we're going to do it by changing our relationship with the fossil fuel past. And we're going to ask young Americans to install this new energy technology into our society. And so, so that, back in December, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and I, we had a two-hour lunch. And we said, let us partner to construct a resolution that we will introduce into the House and into the Senate. And it will be an intergenerational compact. Yes. And we will call it the Green New Deal. Yes. And with that Green New Deal, we will signal that business as usual is over. And it has been my great honor. this issue. And the Green New Deal is right now nine weeks old. <laughs> and it's already forced everyone in our country to start to have a view on climate change. In 2016, not one question was asked of Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump by reporters on their views on climate change. I think the Green New Deal has solved that problem. <laughs> so this generation, your generation, is rising up and demanding that we protect the planet against the greatest challenge of our time, climate change. And in the face of opposition, in the face of Donald Trump, you are not agonizing, you are organizing. And you have to build a fear into the hearts of the fossil fuel industry. And you will lead this movement that implements the solutions that ends the catastrophe that is endangering this planet. Never in our history have the interest of all Americans been so united in a single cause like climate change. From the air we breathe, to the jobs that employ us, to the neighborhoods that we live in, to the economy we operate within, climate change defines our existence. Global temperatures are at the highest in recorded history. There's an erosion of our coastlines, and there's an erosion of the earning power of workers. There is a pollution of our planet that is now occurring because of the pollution of all of this fossil fuel money which is in our political system. There's an interrelationship of these ills in, and injustices which is undeniable. But the challenge is not insurmountable. It will only be through an historic intergenerational commitment to end climate change that we create the kind of democracy that works for all of Americans. We can deliver a Green New Deal to America. So, when we are talking about, when we talk about a Green New Deal, what are we talking about? We're talking about jobs and justice. We are talking about the greatest blue collar job creation program in generations. We are talking about repairing the historic oppression of frontline and vulnerable communities which have borne the worst burdens of our fossil fuel economy. for the black and Latino families who breathe different air than white Americans. And, plus, and plus, that justice starts in the 
education of the workers who will install the solar panels to make clean energy. We need to give young people the ability to learn cutting edge skills that are adaptable to the changing needs of the workforce. This will serve them and the rest of the community for the rest of their lives, and it will serve the needs of our planet. Investing in green job training programs in Dorchester, in Roxbury, in Mattapan, in communities across this country will make these young people future proof because for the rest of their lives they can have jobs insulating buildings, making them more efficient, installing solar panels, installing wind panels for the rest of their lives. If we give them the job training they need, we will future proof them. We will give them that guarantee of what they will be doing for the rest of their lives. is about an historic 10-year mobilization that will mitigate climate emissions and build climate resiliency. We have acted on this scale before, and we must do it again. We need massive renewable energy deployment, wind, solar, offshore wind, storage batteries, all electric vehicles. Our energy future will not be found in the dark of a mine, but in the light of the sun. Yes! transit, clean cars and manufacturing, and working with key industries to eliminate pollution. We can create high quality jobs and enforce labor standards, guarantee rights to retirement security and health care, and conduct inclusive decision making. There are already critics on both sides who say this does not go far enough or that this can never get done. Well, the Green New Deal is either too much, too little, too fast, too costly. Well, if Republicans and Donald Trump had their way, it would be too late. And that's why today is the moment. Republicans don't like the Green New Deal because they don't like a functional government. Republicans change. Republicans don't like the Green New Deal because clean energy jeopardizes the interests and bottom line of their biggest contributors. They may not believe that climate change is an existential threat to humankind as the UN scientists do. But they are smart enough to know that the goals of the Green New Deal are an existential threat to the business model of the Koch brothers. And all the so, so as we commit to action, let us remember the old saying, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then climate change, there is one thing that separates those special interests from the people in this room on every one of those issues, and that is that we are right and they are. Climate deniers and the critics use to give up, give us the uh, proof positive that we should move forward. And we should move forward hard. 
because this is the national security, public health, environmental, and moral issue of our time. Yep. Failure is not an option. No, the not. question should not be if we can do a Green New Deal. The answer should be when we will do a Green New Deal. Yeah. When President Kennedy felt that the Soviets controlled outer space and that we needed to deal with that existential threat to the United States and the free world. And he gave an address to the American people. And what he said was that he was going to challenge our country to send a mission to the moon and to return it safely within 10 years. And there were skeptics. And the president said that we would have to invent alloys that did not exist, metals that did not exist, propulsion systems that did not exist, and we would have to bring that rocket back from the moon safely through heat, half the intensity of the sun. And he said, we are not going to do this because it is easy, but because it is hard. But yeah. we will succeed because we are Americans and we are bold, and we know that this challenge cannot be ignored. Well, this challenge knows that the same kind of existential threat is now posed. It is climate change. And if we don't deal with it, we are going to have tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people whose lives will be irrevocably harmed. And people say, well, we're radicals. We're socialists. Yeah. Well, well, all we want, if it's called socialism, all we want are the same tax breaks for wind and solar and all electric vehicles and batteries and clean buildings that the oil been getting socialistically from the American taxpayer. And I don't feel like we're on the wrong side when Pope Francis tells us we have a moral responsibility. This is not a resolution. This is a revolution that the Green Deal represents, that the Sunrise Movement represents, and we must be bold. So let's just look at the sunrise and what has to happen in this country. And all I can ask from you is, are you ready to rise up and fight for Soviet?